Hello, I'm gonna give you a brief walkthrough of the You Can't JavaScript Under Pressure game, um, which is a series of tests that evaluate your ability to write JavaScript quickly. And I found this on javascriptweekly.com. Actually, it's an email, so sign up for it. They cover a lot of topics, everything from beginner through advanced stuff. Um, Ember, Angular, raw JavaScript, CoffeeScript, everything in between, writing your own frameworks and libraries, modular JavaScript, um, tons of great stuff. It's a great way to keep up to date. So this is just a quick game that um, you can use to kind of assess your understanding of basic concepts. It's not anything crazy advanced, um, but it is fun. So. Let's dig in. I will try to give a brief explanation of each function, the argument that's being passed in, and what it expects to be returned, and how to think about programming this stuff. Uh, the first couple are really easy. It's all pretty easy, but um, you'll see. So first level, we need to double an integer and basically get an integer i being passed in, and then simply return the doubled value by multiplying it by two. And here you can see what the um, what the argument actually was. Next level is a number even. So we'll use the modulus operator here. Oops. Um, I modulus two will return one if the number is odd. It's just the remainder of a division. So if it indeed is one, um, then the number is false, or the number is odd, and so is number even should be false. And if it's not false, it can only be even, which means we return true. And here again, you can see the arguments being passed in. Um, gets into some kind of wacky math prototype stuff, but it's all just numbers. Next one is um, getting the file extension that may or may not exist on a string. So we get a string i being passed in, and we're going to search it to see if there is a dividing character, which is a zero, uh, not a zero, but a period. And all we'll do here is use a couple string functions. So if i dot index of which um, is a string function that searches a string using another string or character and then returns the index of it. And if it doesn't exist, it returns a one, or a, sorry, a minus one. Um, so if it returns a minus one, we can return false, that this doesn't actually have um, an extension. Otherwise, we can return I dot split, which is another string function. We can pass div in as the place where the split happens. Split will take a string and spit out an array. And since there might be, you know, some files have multiple periods in them, we just want to get that last, um, the last uh, piece of content in the array. And so we can use pop to do that, which is an array function um, since split returns an array. So, so far so good. The next one gets a little more complicated. Uh, we are taking in an argument that is an array. And within the array, there may be strings, there may be numbers. Who knows what's in there? We basically want to find the longest string and return it. So let's set max string equals nothing at this point. And what we want to do is write a for loop. Oops. Do for r j equals zero. If I I'm sorry, if j is less than i.length, the length of the array, 
then we'll increase J. And here we'll check um, if I dot I index at J is I think what we're going for here is type of string. So if that is a string, then what we'll do is see is I at position J is that length um, greater than the length of um, the string max s. So on the first time through this loop, um, max s is length will be zero. So the first time through, it will always plug something in. The second time through, it may not, depending on whether or not that second string is in fact longer than the first one. So if it is, what we can do is set max s equal to i at position j. And then down here we return max s. We did it. The last test is a bit more complex. It uses recursion. And uh, basically we get an array coming in. Um, and we have to sum all of the integers that we find within it. Now the, the trick here is that um, the content of the array might be anything. It could be another array, which it is. So there are nested arrays going on. And what we have to do is find the sum of all of the numbers. And if we don't find a number, we have to see if there is an array and then traverse that. So basically what this means is we're going to write a recursive function. Um, we set sum just to accumulate all the numbers that we do find. And then we do an iteration um, through uh, that first array that's being passed in. And then we can call the recursive array sum on it if we find another array. So basically what I'm doing here is just going through the length of the array i and then we'll check if um, if ij is an instance of array. This isn't probably the best way to do this but it's how we're going to do it for now. Um, and what we want to do here is we want to add the sum, um, but as the result of calling oops, calling uh, this function itself, instead of passing i in, we're going to pass i at position j. So that's where the recursion happens. And this will just keep digging down until... Oops, we find um, that I position J equals number. And again, I don't think this is the best way to check the types on these uh, on these variables, but it works for this, so I'm just going to do it since it's fast and probably not the best way to do it, but. Um, and this would just be ij. And we return the sum, and it should be good unless I've screwed up somewhere, but I don't think I have. Here you can see. We did it! Yay! If you have any questions, let me know, and I'd be happy to take all comments, criticisms, and otherwise. Just don't be too mean. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.